University School Board took action tonight after a parent's repeated plea to remove a textbook from school. And the reason, the book's treatment of Islam. The Sullivan County School Board decided tonight to set up a committee to review a textbook used in Sullivan County Middle Schools. The social studies book includes a section on Islam. Tonight, a parent who's repeatedly complained about the curriculum went back before the board and Jordan Moore found out now the attorneys are involved. Josh, Sarah, Edmiston filled out a textbook change form that will now prompt the Sullivan County School District to review the textbook and look at all of their options. The book is biased. It teaches a distorted view of Islam and fails to teach it in truth and entirety. Another Sullivan County Board of Education meeting meant another plea from Michelle Edmiston, a mother of a middle schooler who wants a textbook yanked from her child's school immediately. Why? Because of the teaching of Islam. I'm so honored to stand here for the King of Kings and for the Lord of Lords, who is Jesus Christ, whether we try to take him out of our school or not. But this time, Edmiston's push for change didn't end with her speech. I did turn in the paper to have the textbook removed. Um, I did receive an email back from the director stating that she had received that. She's now submitted an official textbook request form to the district. So what happens next? Board Chair Michael Hughes explains. A review committee will be put together to review that textbook and, and, and options. But that was about all he could comment on as this has now become a legal matter. Anything other than this process, any other comments should, should go through our attorney. Edmiston told us after the meeting she now has legal representation. I have retained the help and services of a nonprofit organization. In her effort to continue to push for change. Keep coming back until something is done. Jordan Moore, News Channel 11, in your corner. While the board did form a textbook review committee, they gave no definite timeline.
pressing move today. The outgoing governor of North Carolina and Charlotte City Council put in a motion uh, necessary to, to repeal the state's controversial bathroom law. Critics claim the measure discriminates against the LGBTQ community. As NBC's Jay Gray reports, the law could be off the books by Wednesday. In an early morning meeting, the Charlotte City Council voted 10 to 0 today to repeal the city's non-discrimination ordinance with the promise state lawmakers would do the same with their controversial bathroom bill. This action is taken to open a path forward toward achieving our goals. The initial measure passed by the City Council in February sparked a major debate across the state and nation over LGBT rights. Many in the legislature called it overreaching and responded with House Bill 2, which in effect nullified the city's ordinance and banned many transgender residents from using restrooms in government buildings that match their gender identity. The backlash to HB2 was quick and costly. We have lost jobs. We have lost opportunities. We have lost headquarters coming to the area. Major companies, including American Airlines, Apple, Facebook, Bank of America, and Dow Chemical, lined up against the measure. The NCAA moved seven championship tournaments out of the state, and the NBA pulled its 2017 All-Star game out of Charlotte. After more than nine months of controversy and hundreds of millions of dollars in lost revenue, outgoing Governor Pat McCrory has called the entire issue politically motivated. He's called a special session of the legislature where lawmakers are expected to fully repeal HB2. Business owners have been vocal about it for months, and now they say they've lost customers, employees, and investment dollars, all because of House Bill 2. But now on the eve of its possible repeal, local merchants are celebrating. WRL's Amanda Lamb spoke with them today and joins us now with what they're saying. Amanda? You know, Deborah and David, you may have noticed right after House Bill 2 passed, there were signs in a lot of business owners' windows saying HB2 is bad for business. Well, tomorrow, they hope they can take those signs down. When House Bill 2 first passed, companies like Wedpix in Raleigh, which hosts a wedding photo sharing app online, heard from its customers. They read that we were a Raleigh, North Carolina company and elected not to use our product any longer because of the fact that we are here in the state that supported uh, that initiative. Some companies chose not to invest in North Carolina businesses. Said that they were refraining from making any more North Carolina investments f during the time that this bill was in, in action. We're not doing business with you from North Carolina because we think you're this kind of a state and you're these kind of people. Sam Ratto says his chocolate and coffee business in downtown Raleigh took a direct hit from the passing of the bill. But he believes in a sweeter future if it's repealed. I think if you send a clear message that you're willing to participate in democracy and you're willing to say that everybody that wants to do business here can and you're not going to segregate or say this isn't allowed in one way or the other, I think we could be in a good spot. But even with the expected repeal of HB2, business owners say change won't happen overnight. I think that there is work that we're going to have to do as a community and as a state uh, to repair some of those damages that, that uh, incurred from, um, from the passing of the bill. Now, of course, things that have already pulled out, like the NCAA tournament and some musical events, those are already gone. That's water under the bridge. But moving forward, business owners hope that event planners will take a second look at North Carolina if this bill is... We are following breaking news happening right now at the state capitol in Raleigh. In the past 30 minutes, the House voted to adjourn after talking about repealing the controversial law, HB2, talks that stalled. Lawmakers met all day. A bill that would repeal it was filed, but no votes were cast, and the political fighting continued. There's a lot of negative comments from the back row. Very simply, vote for this bill, and you repeal HB2. If that's what you want, that's all you need to do. Quick update, we are nowhere. Things seem to fall apart during the last hour. Sources at the legislative building are telling Channel 9 right now Republicans just didn't have the numbers to pass the full repeal. And that uncertainty came even with the GOP majority in the House and Senate, but the bill is not dead yet. Here's a look at how today unfolded. First, Charlotte City Council gathered for an emergency meeting to repeal the rest of the changes made to its non-discrimination ordinance early this year. 
Well, then the special session began in Raleigh. Lawmakers went in and out of recess all day long. They never appeared to be on the same page. And as we've said, no vote was taken. So tonight we have team coverage. We're digging deeper into that emergency meeting in Charlotte today and this indecision in Raleigh. Eyewitness News reporter Blake Hansen kicks things off from the Capitol where a lot has been happening. Blake? Yes, yeah, Scott, right behind me is the doors into the Senate chambers, and that's where all of the attention is right now. In the last 30 minutes, the House voted to pass an adjournment resolution and simply said that means that the House could adjourn. However, the Senate would need to pass a similar resolution first. The House could still take up an HB2 repeal, repeal bill. However, this certainly sends the message that there isn't an agreement there and there might not be an agreement among the Greater General Assembly and there may not be any sort of agreement about a repeal bill today. Let's give you some background on what's been going on late this afternoon. It took a long time before there was any bill introduced at all. Then Senate Bill 4 was introduced in the Senate. That was debated on the House floor, but the Democrats were not happy with it, and clearly it's possible that some Republicans weren't either. That bill had a catch to it. It wasn't just that House Bill 2 would be repealed, but also that there would be a six-month moratorium on any cities in North Carolina passing a sort of non-discrimination ordinance, and Democrats voiced their distaste with that notion. So that was brought up on the Senate. Then there was a recess, and after that recess, the Senate has not got back together. The House, within the last 30 minutes, as I mentioned, took up that adjournment resolution. In the past five minutes, I've been following some of the leadership around as they've been meeting behind closed doors as we try to get a sense of if there is any chance of any deal today. Keep in mind, this is the cost to taxpayers of $42,000 and the potential now that we may have no deal at the end of the day, but there is still a slim chance for that. Reporting live from the Legislative Building, Blake Hanson, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. All right, Blake, thank you. Now, the Charlotte Chamber has been very vocal today on social media, urging folks to call their lawmakers and push them to vote to repeal HB2. Uh, the House bill did cost Charlotte millions of dollars. The city lost the NBA All Star game and other major sporting and entertainment events, and of course, hundreds of jobs as well. As we said, Charlotte City Council had an emergency meeting this morning and voted to fully repeal the non discrimination ordinance that it passed in February. It was the second time in a week that they addressed this issue. Eyewitness News reporter Tina Terry continues our team coverage from the Government Center, where the city attorney responded to some criticism from lawmakers. Well, yes, the city attorney defended city leaders who met here Monday, saying that they had good intentions. And despite critics, he says they had no intention of making anyone in Raleigh deceived. We're not dumb enough to try to trick them or trap them. Charlotte City Attorney used strong words today defending the council's actions Monday. That's when leaders voted to repeal only portions of the controversial non discrimination ordinance they enacted back in February. They struck down the portion which banned discrimination based on family status, marital status, sexual orientation, gender identity, and gender expression in businesses and other public places, but they left in place portions they felt weren't invalidated by House Bill 2. The vast majority of the commercial non-discrimination ordinance was not invalidated or preempted by House Bill 2. The decision stirred frustration among lawmakers who felt the city should strike down the entire ordinance. Some felt it could jeopardize attempts to kill HB 2. No attempt was made to hide anything or to deceive anybody. But in an emergency meeting today, leaders repealed the entire ordinance passed in February, hoping it will cause lawmakers to act. Three hours of drive time can make for a lot of distance. And what I would hope is that we see trust developing between Raleigh and Charlotte. And as we heard earlier, that decision is still being made right now in Raleigh, not looking well for city leaders who were hoping that HB2 would be repealed today. Now, if it is repealed, then Charlotte will go back to the non-discrimination ordinance that existed before February 22nd. Reporting live tonight in Uptown, Tina Terry, Channel 9.